So last week, we had a little bit of an introduction to prayer. Uh, specifically, we looked at the, uh, the Lord's Prayer itself, but we talked about prayer in general quite a bit as well. Uh, today, we're going to continue this rather short series on the Lord's Prayer by talking about the, what you can kind of call the first third. Um, so in a way, you can split up the Lord's Prayer into three general sections. Section number one is who God is. Section number two is asking for God's kingdom to come on this earth. And section number three is for the things that we need. Um, obviously, in the midst of that, if you remember way back from way back to confirmation and you remember your small catechism, there's obviously a lot of different things that get labeled as petitions. But in general, those are the three sections, much like the Ten Commandments can be split into the commandments that are about God and the commandments that are about us. So today we look at our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, that's a pretty straightforward bit, right? We talk to God who Jesus calls Father and Jesus tells us to call him Father, so that's a safe bet. And he lives in heaven, so pretty good so far. And then there's something about Halloween? That hallowed word's kind of odd, right? I mean, we don't use that very often. We don't talk about things being hallowed unless we're saying the Lord's Prayer. Even in the new, not-so-new translation that you sometimes come across, it still says, hallowed be your name, which is odd because it changes all the other words, but it doesn't change that one. But we'll get to that in a minute. So first, let's start with the first bit. Our Father in heaven. Now see, this is something that seems ordinary to us, right? It's like, oh, we, yeah, God is Father, that's, that's fine. It's actually really weird. Because back in the olden times, people and God didn't directly interact. Instead, you had to go through the priest. That was how the Old Testament form of worship was structured. People didn't worship God. You went through the priest to worship God. You went to the priest with all this stuff. And now Jesus is saying, no, you don't need that anymore. You can talk straight to God. It's become so common for us that we miss what's going on here. Because it cuts out the middleman. Because now we can sit and say, because Jesus is our high priest, and he takes away the barrier of sin, we can talk to the creator of the universe. That's really cool. You know, the guy who, at the very beginning of the Bible, said, let there be light, and light happened, said, let there be land, and land happened, we can talk to him. You don't seem near as excited about this as I am, but this is really neat. And we also know, even though the Father sometimes feels pretty far off, Jesus says in John's Gospel that anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Believe when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. This is a really neat thing that God lets us do. In 1 Timothy, Paul writes... I urge then, first of all, the requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. This is good and pleases God our Savior. For there is one God and one mediator between God and people, the man, Christ Jesus. So we can talk to God. Talk directly to God with nothing in between. And when we do that the Father will listen to the things that we ask for. James writes that every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And then later from what we read in our gospel today in Luke 11, Jesus says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. 
For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. So not only can we talk to God, but he pays attention to us. I know that might not seem like a distinction, but I'm sure you've ever talked to someone who just isn't paying attention to you. God's not going to be sitting talking on his cell phone when, he's try- when you're trying to have a conversation with him. But see, now things are starting to get a little interesting because God, we can talk to him and he listens to us and we do know that he'll give us what we ask for. But what's important to remember is we don't want to treat God like a vending machine. We don't want to say to God, God, give me this. God, give me this. God, give me that. I want a pony. I want a new car. I want stuff. Then what's interesting is sometimes we can spend, we can actually, we can pray in a good way, but still treat God like a vending machine. Because sometimes when we pray, we get so used to asking for God to do stuff. And sometimes it's very good things that we ask God to do. It is good to ask God to heal someone. But we don't want that to be the only way that we pray. It's good to ask God to help someone find a job. But that shouldn't be the only way that we pray. Instead, our, the primary purpose of our prayer should be to know God better. And in the process of that, yes, there will be situations where there's a need and we want God to meet that need. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. But we don't want it to be the only way that we pray. So instead, we start to pray something else. Jesus says at the conclusion of the equivalent passage in Matthew to what we just read in Luke, Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And it's because prayer should be about Seeking God first, that's why we pray, hallowed be thy name. Did I make too big of a jump there? It's pretty, pretty good. I'm almost sad that you followed that because I had a great quote from Princess Bride. Can I use it anyways? All right, so let me explain. No, there's too much. Let me sum up. So first... Hallowed be thy name, right? When we say that, what do we mean? Are we just saying, God, you are holy? Hallowed and holy, basic, more or less the same word. There's a little differences, but more or less close enough. They're synonyms. But how often, we talk about things being holy pretty often, but we don't talk about things being hallowed about the only thing in the English language that has maintained this hallowed word is Halloween and in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, They're actually, oddly enough, it makes sense if you know the history of what Halloween is all about. But that's not neither here nor there. That's a different sermon for a different time like All Saints Day. By the way, um, when I was reading about this, it turns out that that phrase makes even less sense in German because uh, I know this because Luther told me so. I don't speak German, but Luther did, and someone translated his words. He actually wrote, um, this is rather obscure in German. In our mother tongue, we would say, Heavenly Father, grant that your name alone be holy. Holy. Now, doesn't that put a completely different spin on hallowed be thy name? Because instead of just acknowledging that God is holy, instead we're asking, God, may your name be holy. We're not just reminding God that he's great. We're asking for God's name, for God to be first in our lives. We're asking that God be the most important thing to us, the thing that is set apart, 
the thing that is other and that is important. So this thing that once just seemed like, Heavenly Father, you're pretty holy, is now, Heavenly Father, may your name be holy. If you actually look at when people dissect the Lord's Prayer, that is what's called the first petition. Hallowed be thy name. We're not just telling God something he already knows. That is our prayer. We ask, may your name be holy for us. We ask that God will become our greatest treasure that he is the first thing we seek and that we keep him holy during the day in the things that we do, the things that we say, and the things that we think so that we may honor God with our lives. And that's really the focus of this first part of the Lord's Prayer is may God be holy for me. Not just a God who is far off and holy, but a God who we make holy in the ways that we live our lives. We address our Father in heaven, and we ask that he be our priority. Before we ask for anything else, before we even ask that God's will is done, we ask that God be holy in our lives. That's so important. Because if God isn't holy for us, why bother with the rest of the prayer? If God isn't holy for us, can he make his kingdom come? If God isn't holy for us, can he give us his, our daily bread? But when we recognize that God is holy, when we see who he is and we remember who he is, we remember that he is a God that can do all of those things that we ask for him. He is a God whose will is done in the world. He is a God who gives us our daily bread. He is a God who forgives us our sins. He is a God who keeps us from temptation. But if he isn't first in our lives... We need to remember that when we pray this prayer to God, he needs to be number one. And when God is first, it's amazing how much everything else just works. Because when God is first, he tells us that when we seek him first, everything else will be given to us. When we seek him first, his will is done in our lives. When we seek him first, he gives us our daily bread. And when we seek him first, he forgives us our sins and keeps us from sinning even more. When he is first... So when we pray the Lord's Prayer a little bit later in the service, remember that. That when we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, that we are asking for him to be our priority, for him to be holy, not in an abstract sense, but for us every single day. 